The final part that you need to create good looking apps is styling. For styling, tkinder has a couple of different options. The first one is the inbuilt styling tools. For that, we have the widget options and we have the style object. Widget options you should already have seen. For example, when I'm giving a label a background, that is a widget option. The next one is external themes. This basically means you're importing a set of graphics and certain styles and you apply them to all of your widgets. Finally, we have external modules. These are literal external modules that people have made that build on top of tkinter and they are giving you a ton of extra functionality and extra styling, which are incredibly useful. Now, unfortunately, there's one issue I really have to talk about. And that is that the inbuilt styling tools and the external themes just aren't very good. There are a couple of reasons why they are quite bad actually. The most obvious one is that they just don't look particularly good. But besides that, they're also quite annoying to work with and you don't have that many options. I am going to go over them, but I will not use them too much. Most of what I am going to use are the external modules because those are actually really good and significantly more powerful. So let's talk about external themes and tkinter's inbuilt styling tools. For that, I already have a couple of lines of code ready. I am importing tkinter, I am creating a window, I am creating a label and a button. Finally, I am running the window and that's literally it. Running all of this is giving me an app like this. It's probably a bit large. Let me make it smaller. Let's say 400 by 300. That is looking a bit nicer. What you can already do is add a bit more styling when you are creating either the label or the button. For example, what you have already seen is a label can have a background and this is a background color. For example, this could be white. Although I suppose that's quite hard to see. Let's go with red. That's definitely visible. In here, you have a few more options. For example, you could also update the foreground color. Let's make this one white. If you spell this correctly, this is also going to work like so. Now we have a label with white text and a red background color. Let me move all of this over multiple lines so it's a bit easier to read. Another option you have for customization is called the font. This one, well, it determines the font. The important thing here is this needs a tuple. This tuple should contain two parts. We have the font and the font size. The font size is really easy. This is just a number that determines the size of the font. Let's go with 20. The font is the actual style of the text. This one needs a string with the name of a font style. To get all of the fonts, what you have to do is from tkinter, you want to import something else. This something else is called font. Once you have that, you can print font.families and don't forget to call it. If you run a code now, you can see all of the fonts that you could be using. Let me pick one at random. Let's go with Jokerman. On your system, you probably have different ones, but just choose whatever you want in here. Jokerman, and there we have a font that's definitely visible. If you install external font themes, they would also show up in the list. So we can extend this quite easily. For the text, there are two more things that I do want to cover. The first one is called Justify. For this one, we have the options right, left, and center. What this one is doing, I think is quite obvious. It justifies the text. However, if I run this right now, the result would not be visible. For the simple reason that right now the text box is this wide, exactly as wide as the label. Because of that, it wouldn't really matter if you put the label on the right, on the left, or right in the middle. Since the label covers the entire area of the background, you are not going to see a difference either way. However, what we can do when we are specifying the text, we can add a line break in here with a dash and an N and then type on another line. If I run this now, we have text that is centered. If I change the center to left, we have left center text, and this could also be right. There we go. Now we have right center text. 
Although, if you only have one line of text, let's say only a label, you wouldn't really want to use justify, instead you would rely on the layout methods. Those make it much easier to place the label in a certain position. Although you can certainly combine different ways of making all of this work, it's entirely up to you. With that, we have a whole bunch of style methods inside of the widget. That's a pretty good start, although if I run this, this still doesn't look terribly good. I guess we have quite a few options, but they are still limited. But with that, we are going to run into some problems. For example, I have a button. If I want to style the background of this button with background and red, if I run this now, we would get an error. We have unknown option background. On top of that, let me comment out the print statement at the top. This one's getting a bit annoying. If I run this now, we are just getting in the error that button has no option background. The same would apply to foreground. It's not available. Although font, I believe, does work. Let's copy this one, Jokerman and 20. Actually, no, it also doesn't work. The button doesn't have any of the label styling methods, which is very, very annoying. What is even worse? If you look online, for example, for this website here, you might have Googled how to give a button a background color and you found this. You'll scroll down a tiny bit and you find a code snippet like this. Where you can see we have foreground and background. So maybe the problem in my code was that I used background, but BG was the proper name. Let's try that one. Back in my code, I want to use BG. Let's go with yellow. But if I run the code now, we get unknown option BG. So what's the issue here? You might have already seen what the difference is. Just check out this code and then try to figure out what the difference is. The difference is that this person is only importing everything from Tkinter. There are no TTK widgets. And this is something I talked about all the way in the beginning. In Tkinter, we have TK widgets and we have TTK widgets. TTK widgets is what I have used most of the time and those are the much more modern widgets. TK widgets I have used sometimes, like text for example. These TK widgets can use this kind of styling, but they do look much more outdated. While the TTK widgets look more modern, but have a different kind of styling. Unfortunately, a lot of websites online have written these tutorials a long, long time ago. So this tutorial here probably wasn't updated in just about a decade, possibly longer. I would definitely not recommend any of their courses. Be careful with that one. So how can we style a button? For that, we need a whole new concept that is called style. What that means is we have to create a style object. Let me save it inside of a variable right away. We want to have TTK and style. Don't forget to call it. This is going to give you a styling object that can apply styles to every single widget inside of tkinder. I can actually use this right away. We can use style.theme underscore use for the argument I want to use clam. If I run this now, we get an error unknown option BG because I didn't get rid of this background. Now let me try this again. And there you can see the button is looking a tiny bit different. That is because of this clam theme. If you are on a Mac or Linux system, this might not work. To figure out what themes are available on your system, you want to print style and theme underscore names. Don't forget to call it if I run this now. On my system, I have Win Native, Clam, Alt, Default, Classic, Wister, and XP Native. Let's use Classic for the theme use. And there we have a really old style button. I think the theme they are using is Windows 98. However, all of these styles aren't very good, so I'm not gonna use any of them. Instead, what I want to do is I want to have style and configure the style I'm currently using. In here, we need, first of all, a string of the widget we want to update. And then we can set, for example, the background color to something like, let's say green. The name of each widget always starts with a T and then the name of the widget. 
For example, a button would be a button. T button would style all of the buttons in your app. Meaning now if I run this, we have a button with a green background color. It's kind of hard to see, but it's definitely there. I think if we change this to foreground, this is much more visible. There we go. Now our button has a green text. In here, we can also set the font. Let me copy it from the label. I want to have Jokerman and 20, like so. Now if I run this, we have a button with custom text. What you can also do is set custom styles for every widget. For that, you would have to add another kind of text, whatever you want. Let's say new and then dot and then T button. This would create a new style for a button, but you could apply it specifically to a widget. If I run the code now, the button would have the default style. We would only get the styling back if I set a style for the button and this would be new dot T button. Now if I run this, we have our styling back. This style configure here is actually a lot more powerful. For example, right now, we only have the text of the button color. But what if I wanted the text color to be different when I'm pressing the button or when I have pressed the button? We can create a style.map. In here, first of all, we have to target a certain kind of element. In my case, this is going to be new.t button. After that, we have to target one kind of attribute. This could, for example, be the foreground. But now, we are assigning this a list. This list is going to be full of tuples. Inside of each tuple, we have the state and then the option for the color in this case. For example, if the button is pressed, I want the button to be red. However, if the button is disabled, then I want the button to be yellow. If I run this now and I press the button, you can see the button is red. If I, inside of the button, set the state to disabled, then the button color would be yellow. And we can't click on the button because it's disabled. Inside of the map, you can then add more arguments. Let's say besides the foreground, I also want to have a background color. And I am very bad at spelling background. For this one, once again, I want to have a list. If the button is pressed, then I want to have a green background color. Another option here would be if the button is active, I want it to be blue. I should add a comma. And now if I run this, you can see that we have a couple of different background colors for the button. They are quite hard to see because we are styling the background behind the button. It's, um, well, not ideal. Once again, this kind of styling is really annoying to work with and very soon we are going to find much, much better ways to work with all of this. In fact, let's do an exercise and then we are done with this bit. What I want you guys to do for the exercise. I want you guys to add a frame with a width and a height and give it a pink background color. Pause the video now and try to figure this one out. First of all, we have to create a frame. This is going to be frame is equal to ttk dot frame. The parent is going to be the window. On top of that, I have to give this thing a height and a width. I'm going to use completely random numbers for width. Let's go with 100. Finally, I want to pack this entire thing. If I run the code now, we can't see anything because frames by default have no color. The frame now is kind of similar to the button in the sense that we couldn't just add a background with pink in here. We would just get an error. Instead, what we have to do, I'm going to cut this one out. Inside of the style, we have to configure a new widget, which means I have to use style.configure. For the widget, I used to have T button, but now I need T frame. Once I have that, I can set the background. Let's go with pink. If I run this now, we have a pink frame. With that, we have covered the inbuilt styling methods for tkinter. This video is already getting a tiny bit longer, so let's finish it here. And for the next video, we are going to cover different kinds of themes.